We have a visitor today. His name is Steve, and he's very excited because it is his birthday today. Oh, happy birthday. But he doesn't realize that it's also the birthday of the church today because it is Pentecost Sunday. However, we are having cake in honor of Steve today. <laughs> and I'm to let you know, and we're going to talk a little bit about cake and stuff during the children's time, but um, we do have cake and ice cream for fellowship, but you have to give us a minute because they have to go downstairs and get it. So hang out and talk and we'll have cake and ice cream after all is up here and ready to go. So welcome to Eden Presbyterian Church on this Pentecost Sunday, June 5th, 2022. And I have a couple of announcements that aren't probably on your sheet. But first and foremost, you probably saw the camera this morning as you walked in, in the middle of the aisle. It is a trial run. We borrowed it from the Presbyterian Church in Mason City. We did some um, trials yesterday, and people were watching and saw that everything was working. So those of you watching today, I um, would like some feedback. This is for like Irene and Bill and Sue, who are watching at home. We need to know about sound and picture, and um, if you could just let us know that, we would appreciate it. I know the feedback yesterday with the trial was good, but we're now worship, so we need to kind of see how that all works together. Other announcements that are on the screen, we do have a clergy cluster with the uh, North Oak Pentecost offering. There we go. Um, we do have clergy cluster on Wednesday, but I will not be in Denver, Iowa on Wednesday. My dad has decided to go to Oregon on Wednesday, so I'm taking him to Minneapolis so that he can see his oldest sister, um, the one who has ALS. Um, she is declining quickly and rapidly. Um, she can't keep her head up, and so she's uh, basically taking in about 30% oxygen levels right now. So. Um, he is heading out there to see her, and so I will be taking him to the airport on Wednesday. Um, on Thursday morning, if you would like to join me at the seminary at 9 a.m., that will be our coffee hour for this week. And then on Friday, we have our memorial worship for Alice Gracious here at 11 o'clock. Um, you have help, Linda? Okay. So um, come and celebrate her life with her family. They will all be here. And again, that starts at 11 o'clock on Friday. And then next Sunday, we will be in Spring Park with our worship, with potluck picnic. We'd ask that you bring a dish to share. Um, bring a chair to sit in, because I don't know how many park benches or anything that we have out there. If it is raining, we'll make that decision early enough so all will know. Um, but we will move to Osage UCC at 10 a.m. There will be a sign on the door, so for those who show up here, we'll hopefully go to the park that morning. And then on June 18th, now this isn't on here either, we got an email. Um, the Emmanuel Women of Grafton is having a speaker. Her name is Loretta Schaefer at 1 p.m., We'll send this out in an email so you don't have to remember it, but she is the uh, wife of the interim pastor there out at Emmanuel, and she collects dolls. She has collected dolls for years, ever since she was a kid, and she is going to present and have a story time about these dolls. So if you're interested in going to Emmanuel on June 18th in Grafton, um, they are inviting us to join them. and. It also says you're supposed to bring a f favorite childhood doll or others, or any others you might like. Um, that doesn't mean you have to, but if you're interested, that is their program and they're inviting us to join them. Are there other announcements that I may have forgotten? Pastor? Yes. I, I need another session member to help me serve you. You need another session member to help I you serve communion. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mike will help you. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let us turn our attention to why we're here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for all who are able, you please stand and join me in our call to worship. 
How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my name. May my meditation be pleasing to him. For I rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And let us turn to our opening hymn, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, which is hymn number 289. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us come to God and confess our sins against him and our neighbor as we come together in prayer. Without your power, O oh God, we are lost. We have done the things we would avoid and what you desire we have not done. By your purifying fire, transform our lives Guide us into honesty and compassion, so that filled with your peace, our dreams and visions may be one with yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We do have the assurance that we are continually being made new into the image of Christ. The slate is wiped clean, and we can live in hope toward the future without being enslaved to our past failures. In Christ, we have the power to work with God's Spirit, who is continually making all things new. In Him, we are forgiven. Amen.
seated. So as I said, today is the birthday of the church, and you know, Dean, I hope that cake looks just like that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're just looking at that. Google search. It does amazing things. So with parties, birthday parties, anniversary parties, graduation parties, what do we need besides cake? People. What? Ice, Ice cream. cream. Presents. Lots of presents. Presents. <laughs> sorry, I didn't get you one today, Steve. I'm so sorry. What else? <laughs> yes. Birthday cards. Cards. Singing. A reason to celebrate. A reason to celebrate singing. I'm forgetting the most decorations. If I would have had balloons today, I would have blew them up and we would have been tossing them around the sanctuary. Some people do that for Pentecost, you know. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'm <laughs> too traditional. However, birthday items, party items, help us remember what happened in the church of the day of Pentecost. And they also remind us that the Holy Spirit is still at work in the church today. Balloons add a lot for celebration, but they tend to get flat or they're lifeless unless they have air in them. And so we need to breathe life into that. And when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, that's exactly what it did. It breathed life into them. It also breathes life into us. We are alive and well and any good birthday cake has candles, and I've done this before. Candles do not show a shadow. Can you see it now? My hand didn't do it justice the last time I did that. But we see the flame, we know it's there, but there is no shadow. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what's giving us life. It burns within us. People can see it, but they're trying to figure out, well, how do you get it? Whatever it is that burns our desires, we remember that the Holy Spirit is alive and well. And so when we celebrate the birthday of the church today, we get to remember the work that he calls us into as well. To be the disciples of Christ, to go and spread the message of his love and his grace and his forgiveness. And we get to live in that. And we become like the disciples in the early church. We are those disciples. And so we get to hear that message of how the disciples became filled with the Holy Spirit coming out of the uh, book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. <coughs> I normally find this before worship. There it is. So when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and then suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them went, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, 
Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Holy and loving Spirit, we thank you for blessing us with your presence in our music and in our liturgy in our lives, filling us with fire and filling us with the joy. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears today so that we hear the message you have for us. And Lord, I ask, may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I said, the Holy Spirit is all about fire and life, doing things we may not understand why we do them. <clears throat> Remember last fall when I had you do the hokey pokey during worship? See, you all chuckle. You all remember that. You probably thought I was a little weird, but, you know, that's the Holy Spirit talking, saying we need to do something and get us excited about being in church. And so we did it together. We laughed, we smiled, we enjoyed our time, and the Spirit filled our hearts as we worshiped. Lillian Daniel, who is the pastor at the Dubuque United Church of Christ, she's actually leaving next week and going to be the Michigan Conference Minister, but she wrote a quote, and I'm not going to be able to recite it word for word right now because I forgot to write it down, but she said this, any idiot can find God on the mountaintop. But it takes a certain someone to understand and see the Holy Spirit in someone like me. It's a quote that basically is followed up with, the disciples were in the upper room for almost seven weeks. Seven weeks together. Can you imagine that? I mean, many of you have been married to the same person for over 40 or 50 years. So you understand what that means. But have you been in close quarters for that long? No, because you've gone to work or you've gone to the field or... And I get to pick on Donna because she's, you know, right here in front. And you know she's been here. She's been here almost two weeks. <laughs> Guess what? Today she goes home. And it's lovely. <laughs> you can only be with somebody for so long. So you have 11 disciples in this little room cooped up for seven weeks. And they had no idea where God was. God had to come find them. 
And that is the sound of the rushing wind that Luke is talking about in the Pentecost story we just heard. It came into that room and it divided like fire and it placed, and if you ever have scripture with pictures, you see this little divided tongue of fire on the top of their heads. And that's what they got. That's why I love Holy Spirit being fire because it is sometimes contained and when we contain it, it means we're not doing much with it, but it can also spread like those wildfires out unfortunately destroying homes and all of that. However, when it is used correctly, fire can be amazing. And that's what the church body is like. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we can be amazing. And that's the whole grace and blessing of Pentecost. There's a story about Fred Craddock and he is a preacher and teacher of the scriptures, well-known author. And he was giving a lecture at a seminary. And he stood in front of the student body. And before the lecture started, one of the students stood up and said, Hey, Mr. Craddock, are you Pentecostal? If you know Fred, he's United Methodist. So absolutely not. He is not Pentecostal. But he said, the crowd grew quiet. And he looked around for the dean of students who was like, how am I supposed to answer this question? And so he asked the student, do you mean, do I belong to the Pentecostal church? And the student said, no, I mean, are you Pentecostal? And he said, are you asking me if I'm charismatic? And the student said, no, I'm asking if you're Pentecostal. And Craddock said, do, I, do you want me to speak in tongues or do you want to know if I speak in tongues? And, he, and the student says, no, I want to know if you're Pentecostal. And Craddock says, I don't know what your question is. And the student said, well, obviously you're not. And he left the room. That's what we're talking about today, being Pentecostal. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, that's what it all means right there. And Fred, the well-known author and preacher, had no idea what that meant because sometimes it means that it's a noun or a denomination or a verb or an adjective. And basically, this student was just wondering, if, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? And when the church is unwilling to recognize that. That's when the church starts to die. That's when the church refuses to remember what we were all about. And when the church decides that Pentecost or Pentecostal is an adjective, that it describes who we are, then we are. And here you thought you were Presbyterians. <laughs> You're Pentecostal today. You are alive and well, and you have a fire burning within you, and we keep it moving by doing things together, by celebrating who we are as we come together as a community. And yet there are times in the year where we may not feel very Pentecostal, and we kind of get ho-hum about things. And so the question becomes, how do we keep it alive? And there's three ways. And the first is to live in one accord. Be in unity. Be in agreement. Agree to disagree. Because when we turn and start arguing with one another, not that I've heard that here, but when we do that in the church body, we're not a church anymore. We need to remember to be agreeing and to live with one another, like those 11 disciples did for seven weeks. Be in constant prayer together. Not just individual, but in community. And we do that, and I know many of you do, because that way God orders our lives. Our need for prayer has not stopped since day one. 
nor has it stopped or changed since Abraham Lincoln declared April 30th of 1863 as a national day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer. We may not have remembered that, but he did declare that because we still need guidance. We still need to be delivered by God, and we still need to be shaped into people with integrity. And the third thing is we must repent. We do a prayer of confession every week, and that is our repentance in the corporate way, but we also need to repent individually. And if there's a moral crisis, we turn to God and ask him for help because God is at work, not just through us, but he works through his son, Jesus Christ, even though we handed him over to the cross. And God raised him from the dead. And he exalted him to the right hand of his father. And we know that he is Lord and King. So repenting is that basic requirement for entrance into the kingdom. Live in accord. Pray and repent. Those are the things that the disciples kind of knew what was going on, but the day of Pentecost, when that wind came on, they understood it. They got it. It changed their minds. They realized their error. And they accepted the one that was condemned. They received Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, to which we all do too. Every day, day in and day out, we receive him, we understand that he forgives us, and by this act, we receive the Holy Spirit that burns within us. That's the gift that we get today with Pentecost. And so through unity and prayer and repentance, we get to harness that Holy Spirit and that power to help others recognize how amazing God is for us. And we get to worship him. And we get to tell people how the one true God reigns forever and ever in our life. And yes, there was a shooting in Ames this last week at the Cornerstone Church. And I've said it before, when people see our Holy Spirit life, when they feel our love that we give to others, it takes a small, small dose, but it will grow. And maybe those shootings can start to end. So let us feel his power and his spirit today. Fill us with that life that he always gives us. And tell the people about the God who reigns in our life. And let us give thanks. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 291 in the hymnal, <coughs> Sweet, Sweet Spirit. <laughs>
are always invited to cast our nets into God's abundance and to share what we have received with others. And so as you leave today, please be sure to put your offering in our offering trays. As we give our tithes and offerings, we put our trust into the one who has called us to follow him, Jesus Christ, the great fisher of people. Amen. this morning in our prayers. We do hold Irene Schupinitz in our prayers. I have not heard from Debbie this week, but last week I forgot to announce that Irene went back into the hospital last Friday. Um, and uh, and I, I hope she's home, but I haven't followed up with that. Um, but uh, So we keep Irene in our prayers and along with the family of Alice Gracious this week. Other loved ones to be lifted up. My brother Phil's um, father-in-law just died suddenly this last week. What, what was his name? <laughs> I would ask that one guy. Yeah. Nina's brother-in-law. Father-in-law. Father <laughs> Sorry. Let us come to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we do come to you today and we do give you thanks for filling us with life, breathing that breath of that spirit upon us and within us so that we can take it out to the world and show them how amazing you are. Lord, help, help them see how amazing you really are through us, through your son, Jesus Christ. And help us just revel and celebrate this day. Lord, we come to you and we ask that you be with all who are sick this day with an illness, who may be recovering from surgery, who may be recently diagnosed with, with something that they may not have seen coming. Lord, we ask that you send your healing upon them all. Lord, we ask that you be with Irene Schubinitz. Lord, continue to help her regain her strength and be able to be at home. We ask, Lord, that you be with the family of Alice Gracious as they travel up here, Lord, to remember her and celebrate her life. And Lord, we pray that you be with Nina's family. Lord, we give you thanks for hearing these prayers and being with each and every one of us. And Lord, we thank you for being a part of our time together each and every week, each and every day. We thank you for celebrating with us the joys of birthdays and anniversaries, the joys of family reunions, and the time of amazing life. 
But most of all, Lord, we come to you and we celebrate with you, your son, Jesus Christ. And we come with the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we turn to the celebration of the Lord's Supper. This table is open to all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we will take and eat and take and drink together as one body as we are being served by our members, our session members today. But let us turn our thoughts to that table by turning to our communion hymn, Alleluia, verses 1, 2, and 4, hymn number 114. for your gift of grace before we knew the unsearchable riches of your child Jesus we walked in shadows and under clouds but now as you reveal radiance to the world we join the hymn sung in glory without end holy 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 Lord God of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on that night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, gave God thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And let us pray. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and cup, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives, we offer ourselves to you, giving thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the broken body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing that we bless, we participate in the cup of the new covenant poured out for all. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. Thank you. 
Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. of the new covenant poured out for you. And now if you are able, we please stand and join in our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And let us turn to our closing hymn, which is Fire of God, Undying Flame, number 301. amaze you with grace and may the Holy Spirit increase your strength and soul to go and share his word.
Go in peace. Amen. Amen.